to this day, I don't think Steve ever knows why I quit his show. Some people don't know this. I did two weeks of the Steve Harvey show. I did one day of Hip Hop Squares, the show D-Ray used to host. And I filmed three episodes in one day of Hip Hop Squares and made four times the money I made doing two weeks of the Steve Harvey show. And I go, well, th this is backwards. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy for 25 years? If what I say ain't the case. It's a cabal, it's a, it's a consortium. They, they rock with who they rock with and they don't with who they don't. Hey, how y'all doing out there? I got some old crazy news for y'all. Steve Harvey messed up big time this time. He tried to blackball Gary Owens white balls and got called out for that. Cat Williams has been trying to let the world know for years that Steve Harvey is a grind ball, but ain't nobody want to hear him out until Gary Owens came out and said what he had to say. Now Tiffany Haddish trying to figure out how she gonna do damage control because allegedly she got some business with Steve. And since Cat canceled him and she working with him, now you got Gary Owens, the white brother that like black sisters. He about to have Marjorie Harvey before this is all said and done. Because when them Donald Trump fans find out what Steve Harvey did to Gary Owens, he ain't gonna be able to find no work, nowhere. Y'all need to listen at this here. To this day, I don't think Steve ever knows why I quit his show. Some people don't know this. When 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 Steve Harvey had the, the talk show, the Steve Harvey show, he left Chicago and he moved it to LA. And I remember I went on his show. First, I went on Steve's show to promote my reality show. And then afterwards, Steve goes, yo, I want to do some stuff with you, man. I want to work with you on some stuff. And I was like, all right. And then I never he, he hit my chest. Like, I'm going to show you how to make some money, boy. <laughs> I was like, all right, show me. And then I'm, I flew to Atlanta. I met with Steve when he was filming Family Feud. We sat down in his trailer. We talked. He's like, yeah, we're going to work this deal out. I'm going to bring you on as my sidekick. We're, we're moving my show from L.A. We're moving my show from Chicago to L.A. And I was like, I was like, dope. I was excited, man. And I thought it was going to be like Johnny Carson, Ed McMahon type thing. I thought that's what this was about. And I'll never forget, I went on his show again about six months later. And they brought me on to do some Memorial Day packing episode it, it was funny we were in a car showing what you should pack what you shouldn't pack and then Steve goes yo they reach out to you I said no nah, I haven't heard anything he goes what and then I got a call the next week and this guy was like yeah yeah Steve told us everything and I had a bad feeling about this from jump so I met with one of Steve's producers and we had lunch and I'm sitting here going I'm, I'm all geeked I'm telling him all my ideas about the show and everything and he's shooting everything down he goes no nah, no nah, we'll, we'll handle that We'll handle the sketches. We'll do this. And I'm just going, I'm not knocking your writers or anything, but you ain't going to tell me that whatever you're coming up with is, is funnier than not what I'm coming up with. Because this is my audience. Who's ever watching Steve Harvey and that live audience and that, that's who I know how to make laugh. And now if you're going to put me on uh, Colbert, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I'll fall back a little bit on that, but not Steve Harvey. And I know it's going to make Steve laugh. And this guy, who's a white dude, shooting down everything. And he, the way he was talking to me, it was almost like they're doing me a favor. And I was I remember I was so taken back. And obviously I'm not going to I'm not going to get a whole Steve with all this. He's he's trying to put the show together. So I, I just fell back. We I agreed to do like a two week run. We got like all we got like 4 months to negotiate my deal we're not getting no negotiating done. So I come in and I'm still thinking this is going to be like Johnny Carson and McMahon. I get there and I got there early in the morning. The first day they, they got me backstage. I'm behind the stage. Nobody even sees me and I'm announcing Steve. So I'm like the voice of God. You just hear my voice, but you don't see me. So I did the whole first week and nobody ever saw me. I was in no sketches. They shut, they, they, they didn't include me in anything. I just basically went, give it up for Steve Harvey. I announced the guest, and then I just go back to my dressing room, and I sit. We would do like two episodes in a day, and I'd go sit. And I'd come back out, announce for 30 seconds, and go sit. And i go, 
this ain't what I thought this was. So then I, I told them, I said, am I going to do any sketches, anything? And then they, the next week they put me in a couple sketches and I got to come out in front of the camera a couple times. And even when I got announced, the crowd was like, oh, snap, get on. And I just remember after the second week, we said, okay, we're ready to negotiate now. I've been there two weeks. And keep in mind, they were filming on Mondays and Fridays. I couldn't work on the weekends. I'm giving up all my stand-up money. But I looked at the bigger picture. I wanted to be a part of the show with Steve. Steve was telling me how maybe we can, when I'm on the show, we'll do a spinoff later. And we go negotiate. Like, yeah, we want to do two more weeks with them. I'm getting paid, like, SAG minimum. Minimum wage is what I got paid. And I'm, I'm going, I can't do this for another two weeks. I've already lost a bunch of money. I lost two weekends of work. Now I'm going to lose two more weekends? And I don't know after these two weeks are you going to hire me or not. I can't take a month off, basically. And I'll just never forget, I we weren't shooting four days. We were shooting like three days a week. So on one, of the, but it was it was it was spread out. We were, it was like Monday, Tuesday, Friday. We filmed. It was like I couldn't do any stand up on the weekends. And I just remember the second week, I did two weeks of the Steve Harvey show. I did one day of Hip Hop Squares, the show D-Ray used to host. And I filmed three episodes in one day of Hip Hop Squares and made four times the money I made doing two weeks of the Steve Harvey show. And I go, well, th this is backwards. I'm just a square. I'm one of nine. And I'm not even the host. And I made more money on Hip Hop Squares than I did being, there's only two people on the show every week, me and Steve. And I go, they weren't even trying to hear anything I said. And this was, the, keep in mind, this is not on Steve Harvey. This was the powers of be behind the scenes. Steve Harvey couldn't stand to see this man shine over him. He know that if Gary had full range over his show, he would have took over the whole show. And I don't blame Steve, because y'all know how they do out there in Hollywood. If Gary Owens would have picked up traction, they would have took the Steve Harvey show and made it the Gary Owens show easily. They would have gave that man the boot. So he felt like he had to protect his interests and people feel like he wrong for that. And I'm starting to believe that's the only reason why Gary Owens can't get a leg up in comedy because his fellow comics already know what time it is. He show up, they gonna lose their job. They all trying to blackball his white balls. It ain't just Steve. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy for 25 years? If what I say ain't the case. It's a cabal, it's a, it's a consortium. They, they rock with who they rock with and they don't with who they don't. But I'm not scared of being the competition any more than you were when you lined up uh, uh, across from a superior team. Yeah, on paper, they're a better team. Right. They have all the assets and resources and we don't. But let us get on the line, boy, boy, and see if that factors in. I, I guarantee you it won't. Hey, you got to get in where you fit in. Everybody ain't going to make it. If Steve and said and whoever else in their clique decided it's going to be us or them, Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Gary Owens is pissed off. He mad. People could smell him a mile away. He's so mad. And Steve Harvey, he don't know what he going to do. It's all right when you got a cat talking crazy and all these other black comedians talking. But now that Gary airing his grievances, he know people that know people that look just like him that write Steve Harvey checks. This is bad. And people been trying to warn Steve, you need to quit being so grimy and disrespecting all these people and let everybody get a bag. But he wasn't trying to hear it. But now I think he going to be willing to listen. Mark Curry going on the rampage right now because Steve done stole all of his jokes. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal and he wear a suit and he, and then he gets this high top fade making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business and it's a man unit. Halloween was a trip, Halloween. We couldn't afford no Halloween costumes. Hey kids, please. Mama sent us down to the liquor store, put boxes on us. We didn't know what we were. I don't know what we are. <laughs> I don't know. She didn't tell her. 
I think we UPS, I guess. I don't know. You've heard me say that every Halloween, I had the same outfit on. Every year. I just had a brown box. I wasn't nothing sad. I just not asked my father, could I have a new outfit? And he said, no, just wear the same one. And it was just a brown box. And he just told me to tell everybody I was a UPS man. Steve ain't the only comedian out there stealing jokes. They got Cat Williams out there stealing a couple of people jokes. I guess that's just a part of the game. It is what it is. People want to hate Steve because of the way he looked. Because if he ain't look like that, he wouldn't be getting all this hate. Let's just be real. If Steve looked like Trey Songz or somebody, wouldn't nobody even be pissed off about it. They would let him still lay jokes and still lay draws. But since Steve, they saying he looking like Mr. Potato Head, everybody pissed off. And they wondering how Mr. Potato Head got a bag, how he doing good, how he driving Bentley's. It seemed like they all hating to me because I'm pretty sure there's other people out there in Hollywood doing them twice as dirty, but they don't never mention their name. But it is what it is. All comedians steal jokes. Cat Williams is necessary. Cat Williams is necessary. This motherfucker shook up the whole shit. I know this shit need to be torn apart and rebuilt. I'm talking about the comedy, the comedy game, the shit that yeah, people don't know. Yeah. yeah, yeah buddy. But he re he shook this motherfucker up. He necessary. And I know it's some people gonna be mad at me for saying that. But also, my nigga, Ken Williams is crazy than a motherfucker. <laughs> this is the Joker of the Batman, the Dark yeah, Knight. Yeah, yeah. Ken Williams is the Joker. Yeah, yeah. I'm an agent of chaos. <laughs> I say crazy, brilliant. Everybody say cra I say it's brilliantly crazy. You can call him okay. brilliant. I, I, I know that he's got brilliance to him, but he's also got to him. You be like, sure. what the? F exactly. <laughs> the interview, the interview of all interviews no. was necessary. <laughs> but let me tell you something. It was some good in there. Some people got exposed. Some people got exposed, but it was some cap in there too. That's the shit that's gonna make everybody mad at me because I don't give a fuck who mad at me anyway. Because I, I ain't gonna do nothing to tell the truth. If the truth make you mad, then you hate God. God if the God, truth God. make you mad, you hate God. It was, it was a lot of, it was some truth in that interview and it was some cap in the motherfucking interview. <laughs> Uh, he, he dig what I'm saying? So yeah. you put a thumbs up and a little cap next to each other, is that what you're saying? It seemed like his head was right, because it's two cats. It's, when I say it's two niggas, listen what I'm saying. When you hear them stories about cats' generosity, they not lying. Top notch. Cat pass niggas money to the point where you be like, do you know what you're doing? Yeah. And don't even he know, know what people. He, he passed money out. He ain't never tripping off no mother money. You don't even have to know him. Cat, man, I'm telling you, we was at Wildin' Out, man. I said this before. Cat threw probably like $50,000, $100,000 in the air. I bent down like a <laughs> I, <can't>. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, <laughs> he made it rain. <laughs> it's two Cat Williams. All you blogger mother y'all ain't got no clue. It's two niggas. It's calm, generous, intelligent, cat, and it is the Joker of Batman. All the comics that got problems with cat, I understand why you got problems with cat, but some of y'all motherfuckers got to admit the problem you have with cat is he uprooting the boot foundation you was built on. Mm -hmm. Other mother got problems with Cat, cause Cat done did some shit to that ass when he turned into that other. Fearless. It's two niggas. I'm telling you. And Cat is fearless. <laughs> when that turned into that nigga, he don't give. A you better get away from yeah, that. he's fearless. All y'all mother, y'all don't know what the fuck is happening. If you ain't in these comedy streets, you don't know what's what it is. But I'm glad that 
uh, Cat went on Club Shay Shay and uprooted a lot of where a lot of motherfuckers got to explain. If you ain't standing on square business, you're going to look stupid explaining yourself. Stop talking about you didn't leave parties with was fucking each other in the ass, and you know you did. You only, just let it ride. <laughs> if you stole jokes, you stole jokes. Listen, you might get mad at me for saying this. 90% of comedians steal jokes. Cat right. stole JB Smooth joke and did it on his special. It's the joke with the music. You can do this to this song. And I damn get an era of comedy where it's too many comics know that I, what I'm saying is straight. Mm -hmm. Almost all the comics stole jokes. What did Steve do to deserve all of this? You got a whole lot of people out there mad at him. I'm talking about Gary Owens, Cat Williams, Mark Curry, every comedian you could think of got a whole lot of hatred in their heart for Steve Harvey. And I just don't understand it. Is he really that bad? Y'all gonna have to let me know how y'all feel about this in the comment section. And make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification button as well. I got so much love for y'all. And also hit that cash app too. Dollar sign Sean Blaze Docs. I'ma holla at y'all on the next video. And one more thing, subscribe to my channel if that's what you want. Subscribe to my channel if that's what you want. But if that's not what you like, then you must be a punk. Hold on.